Plastic mulches have been available since the early 1960s and remain necessary for many agricultural production systems today. Vegetable crops such as strawberry, tomato, cantaloupe, and pepper, to name a few, benefit from mulch. Most equipment lays plastic in a two-step process. The first step shapes the bed by pressing soil into firm sides and forming a level top with no depressions where water can sit on the mulch. The second step unrolls the plastic and cuts a small trench on the bottom of the bed sides to be covered with plastic. Such equipment is not economical for small-scale growers who raise crops for the farmer's market and on-farm sales. One of the advantages of plastic mulch is a significant reduction in weed pressure. However, weeds do manage to grow through the planting hole, which lowers crop yields and adds the expense of removing them by hand or spraying herbicides. In recent years, herbicides have become available for weed management under plastic. No equipment is currently commercially available that applies herbicides during plastic laying. Growers using equipment such as the Rainflow plastic layer need to modify the sprayer to also apply herbicides while laying plastic. Let's take a look at how to modify a Rainflow plastic layer to also spray herbicides in one pass. Here are the parts we will use for the nozzle head assembly. A swivel nozzle body, screen, nozzle, nozzle cap, and the bracket. A flood jet nozzle is best suited to spray a wide band at close proximity. In this case, we need a three foot spray band with a nozzle about 10 inches off the soil. At the time this machine was built, the only nozzle body available was suited for two nozzles, even though only one is needed for our use. The metal bracket seen here is built to support the nozzle. It's built extra long until the final nozzle position is determined, then the excess length is removed. A metal piece was cut to support the 15 gallon tank, which weighs around 120 pounds. In this case, the seat was removed to hold the tank. Here's an overview of the whole tank assembly showing the electric switch, electric connector to the tractor, the strap for anchoring to the base, and the quick connect of the electric switch from the pump. After the tank and the electrical system were set up and installed on the unit, our attention turned to the gap where the spray is to be directed. It was too narrow for accurate herbicide application without the risk of spraying the plastic itself and losing all benefit of applying herbicide. The gap seen here is about two inches. A longer roller brace was built to extend the gap size to at least four inches and then the roller was reassembled on the unit. This piece was welded on the plastic layer. It is used to support the nozzle metal anchor in its final position. Now we're ready to assemble the units together, starting with the nozzle head. The bracket. the nozzle piece to the bracket and putting it all together before mounting. The nozzle mount was built with excess metal to be removed once the final nozzle position was determined. Notice the marks indicating the center of the plastic layer where the nozzle should be placed in order to spray the whole bed evenly. Once the nozzle is attached and its position set, it's time to attach the base plate to support the spray tank, install and brace the tank, Attach the electric switch. Set up the switch near the driver's seat for easy access. And connect the hose from the tank to the nozzle. Proper herbicide application requires spray calibration. Spray volume and tractor speed are used in the following formula to calculate the spray output and the pump pressure. Based on our tractor speed of one mile per hour and a desirable spray volume of 36 gallons per minute, the formula indicates a spray output of 0.22 gallons per minute. That's equivalent to 210 milliliters in 15 seconds. We adjusted the pump pressure until the desired volume output was achieved. Now that the equipment is built and calibrated, we can be sure that we can lay plastic and apply herbicides accurately as seen here.
This close-up shows the nozzle spraying while plastic is laid. Being able to go across the field with a three-row plastic layer is a is a a luxury I thought we'd never realize. Um, me and my brother grow takes about 50 acres of dirt to uh, to grow the tomatoes. Uh, they're sold primarily to to fruit stands. We do go into some chain stores. The bulk of them are sold direct. We're using just a a, a little old 14 or 15 gallon. I forget which they are. Uh, uh, electric sprayer that uh, you can buy them for around $100 from uh, any of your farm supply stores or ATV sprayers, four-wheeler sprayers is what they are. And we're just running three nozzles, just a nozzle per bed. So you're making three beds and one pass? Uh -huh. The way we went about designing it was we, we, got the, uh, we got the sprayer and got the nozzles and then we held the nozzles where we felt like they had to be and then we just built up to them. Uh, there, I, we need to put a protective guard over them because it seems like at least once every year we end up dropping a roll of plastic on them and breaking them. So we carry plenty of spare parts with us. Okay. <laughs> but, but like a day, you're done. Oh yeah, once yeah. Parts, I, I, once you bought all the parts. Yeah. Well, once we got back home <clears throat> with the tank and, and the nozzles, I'm going to say that within probably 30 minutes, or no, not 30 minutes, within a half a day. We, we, we had it up ready to go. Yellow nut sedge is the only weed that can puncture through plastic. Sandia is labeled for use under plastic in tomato production and has proven very effective in nut sedge control. The goal of any successful grower is a healthy, productive plant free from disease, insect, and weed pressure. A working knowledge of proper chemical sprays to use and the equipment to apply them are necessary to make a profit in the business of agriculture.